Hey guys, how you doing? This is Asamo here, and I got Paul. What's up, Paul? How you doing, brother? All right, all right. Today is uh, Monday, the twenty seventh, and uh, we've got an interesting story that's that's happening right now um, that we like to share with you. So what you got, Paul? Well, before we get started, I'd just like to pray and you know, pray for everybody out there. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we humble ourselves before you and we ask for forgiveness for any sins that we have done. And we ask that you help the people out there, the widow, the orphan, the poor. We ask that you touch people's hearts and you help them in their situation with their finances and the roof over their heads and food in their mouth. We ask that you take care of the widow and the orphan, Lord, that you bless them. We ask that you bless Israel in Jesus' name. Well, I think we should probably talk. I was a, there's a pastor from Iran that turned Christian. His name is Yosef, and I don't know how to pronounce his last name. But he's over there right now. He's ready to be murdered by Iran because of his beliefs in Christianity, his beliefs in, in Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And so I don't know if you have, you have some stuff here, brother, that you can show the people what's going on. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, I got an actual picture of, um, uh, person and that's his uh, I believe his family <clears throat> and um, he was converted uh, out of uh, Muslim and turned into a Christian and so uh, they're going to execute him so because um, he turned a Christian so uh, we really need to pray about that this is uh, happening as we speak so uh, this is a picture of his family there and uh I don't know. There's there's a petition here, so I don't know if that does any good because he's in Iran. But um, you could sign a petition saying to to free him by uh, it's called A C L. Uh, you can sign that there. Is that um, the A C L U? Yeah, A C L U and um, C L J. Yeah, and uh, basically. Um, you know, put your side of the story on that. But uh, like I said, he's in he's Iran, so I don't I don't know how that's gonna do any good. But uh, you know, brother, that's uh, that's um, that's amazing. You know, um, uh, for uh, for any religion, I mean, like in Christianity, I know if, if you're a Christian, if you turn Muslim or turn uh, Mormon. Or whatever, or whatever religion, uh, uh, we don't kill anybody because of that. Um, the only religion I know that does that is probably Satanism. I've, I've heard stories of that, and I could be wrong. I don't know, but I know um, people who've been involved in Satanism, and, and if they left that and become a Christian, they'll kill you. And uh, that's just a little side note on that. But we need to really pray for this pastor because his family is. Uh, I don't know if they're they're in Iran, but uh, but he's being sentenced right now and uh, going to be executed. So, um, what you got? Bro? I think I think what's important to understand here too is that you know, the Lord said that if these things are happening in the last yeah. days, uh, I think the speak for itself is I think it's Matthew twenty eight nine or Matthew twenty eight nine. I think it's Matthew 8, Matthew twenty eight nine. And that says that you'll be persecuted, thrown into prison, and murdered. I think that's what it says. I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Huh. You'll be persecuted because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And these things are taking place. Yeah. And uh, anyway, um, to go on that, you know, that's what's happening with this guy right now. Yeah. But to further that, we have another video for you guys. It's by Newsweek today, five hours ago, fresh off the presses. Huh. And this is what my brother has in here for to show you. And then I'll follow up with a little thing that uh, that's on Newsweek so you can know a little bit further about it. And if you're interested, get on Newsweek and check it out for yourself. Mm. So don't you go ahead and play that, bro. Oh, okay, the video? Okay. Yeah. Let's go play. Are Christians around the world under attack because of their faith? That is the case on the latest cover of Newsweek magazine that is making, saying that the rise of genocide in the Muslim world should provoke global alarm. Newsweek executive editor Justine Rosenthal joins me now to talk about the cover story. Justine, it's nice to see you this morning. 
thank you so much for having me, Paul. Absolutely. You know, we have been covering and witnessing these attacks and talking about them taking place in churches across the Muslim world. So explain just how bad has the violence gotten recently against Christians uh, to ask that type of question on the cover of Newsweek. Well, I think that one of the points of this is that we have been covering them as isolated incidents up until now. And what we're really looking at is a constant uptick of, let's say, 300% over the last seven or so years, so that you're starting to see something that feels like a phenomenon. So when you talk about that, of, of connecting the dots, what does the article say in, in reference to the fact that this is becoming more of the norm in Muslim-majority countries? And what's being done to try and quell it? Well, I think that there are two points to make here. The first is that we've focused so much in the West on the sort of growing Islamophobia uh, in Europe and even in America with, of course, the uh, mosque at the site of 9-11. And here what we're talking about is a sort of Christophobia that's happening in the Middle East and that in Egypt, for example, 200,000 uh, Coptic Christians have fled their homes and very little is being done uh, to stop that sort of violence. And we have seen in Nigeria attack after attack over the last year or so. Justine, what do you think it's going to take? And again, very little being done by the government to prevent that. What do you think it's going to take for the West to get involved to help those religious minorities in Muslim majority countries to see this uh, type of violence stopped? Well, hopefully pieces like this, but I think that what the author of the article, Ayan Hirsa Ali, is arguing is that we give a lot of aid to these countries in the Middle East and that we should be making some of that contingent on the governments of these countries trying to stop the violence because some of the violence is state-sponsored and some of it is being sponsored by terrorist groups. It is a fascinating read. It is the cover story on the latest issue of Newsweek. Justine Rosenthal. Justine, great to see you this morning. Thank you. Well, brother. Um, we never uh, came to a day where, where there's going to be actually um, persecution like that happening in, in the world today, right, brother? Yeah. You know what's going to happen? You throw this up real quick before uh, reading this real quick. Uh, uh, Matthew 29, 11, I think it is. Matthew 29? I'll grab it here. I have my book right in front of me. Oh, uh, yeah, I got it. Okay, what does it say? Uh, it says, take up my yoke for it's easy. My burdens are light. Is that 9-11? Uh, uh, you said Matthew eleven twenty nine, right? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's uh, take up my yoke for it's easy. I'm my trying to find the one where it says, uh, I thought it was 20, 28, 11, but there's no such thing as 28, 11. Uh, so, no, there so is no chapter 28. Um, I'm looking for the one that says it'll be persecuted. Okay. Well, I think, mm. I think, brother, I think the uh, the verse it says uh, persecution. It it's in the book of Revelation, and uh, it talks mm. about Satan will will have some of these some of you people uh, uh, persecuted. For a week and some thrown in prisons and uh we're seeing that i mean it does say that in revelation i believe it's uh the church of um not philadelphia but it was um one of the churches being persecuted mm. but uh you know you know that kind of goes back to brother i mean um i don't know in rome remember when they threw the christians and fed them in the lions and stuff because of their faith mm -hmm. so uh um you know, they're happen it's happening in Europe and uh I guess in, in Iran that if you're a Christian then uh, they'll kill you. So Excuse me, brother, that's not twenty nine, eleven, it's twenty four nine. Twenty four nine, huh? Wow. Excuse me everybody out there, I got it mixed. And what that says is uh will be persecuted. You said twenty four nine. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got it. What's it say? It 
It says, uh, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will call on my name. Nations will ride against nations. But then in verse 9, it says, then they would arrest you and persecute and kill. And you would be hated over the world because of my followers. And this is what I'm talking about, people. This is happening in front of us right now. This is happening with Yosef and his family. This is how, what's happening with Christians all over the world that are telling about Jesus Christ. Sure, it's okay to hear about the Muslims and their faith and other faiths, and, but we've never turned, that I, that I know of, that we've murdered people in the United States because of their beliefs. We may have done it. I don't know about it. We have, forgive me for being not misinformed, but I have not heard of anybody dying for our faith here or somebody telling about their faith in this country. And so we go to different countries, and there's a lot of different countries that come here telling us about what they feel. Like Jehovah Witness, Muslim, Hindu, you know, just different factions from different walks of the earth. When we go over there to tell them about Jesus Christ, which is the way, the truth, and the lie, and the only the Father is through Jesus. But to further up this, further up, uh, further on what I'm talking about, this is still in the news room that the gal can tell you about. Because we hear so, so often about Muslims as victims of abuse in the West. The combatants in the Arab Springs fight against tyranny. But in fact, a wholly different kind of war is underway. An unrecognized battle costing thousands of lives. Christians have been killed in the Islamic world because of their religion. It is a rising genocide that ought to prevent global alarm. Let's down further to talk about turning Muslims as victims of heroes is at best partially accurate. In recent years, the violent oppression of Christian minorities has become the norm of Muslim majority nations stretching from West Africa and the Middle East to South Asia and Oceania. It goes down further to say, it says, Christophobia. But a fair minded assessment of recent events and trends leads to the conclusion that the scale of the sever severity of Islamic phobia pales in comparison with the bloody Christophobia currently coursing through the Muslim majority nations from one end of the globe to the other. The truth of silence surrounds this violent expression of religious intolerance has to stop. Nothing less than the fate of Christianity and ultimately all religious minorities in the Islamic world is at stake. Basically, what they're saying is that, you know, all of a sudden, they talk about Islam and, and Hinduism and, and all this, and it, 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 it's, it's mild compared to what they're doing to Christians in different walks of the, of the world. And, for, and, 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 and to show that further, there's a place in Africa, in, excuse, in Nigeria, and it's called it's called Boko Haram, which means Western education is sacrilege. Now, they're talking Western education. They're, talk, they're not talking about the rest of where they live. They're talking about the United States. In the month of January 2012 alone, Boko Haram, which means Western education is sacrilege, is responsible for 54 deaths. In 2000, its members killed at least 510 people and burned down or destroyed more than 350 churches in 10 northern states. This is in Africa, or in Nigeria. Uh, they have attacked the churches at a Christmas Day gathering, killing 42 Catholics, great callers of town hall beauty slayers, the gangs. They have so far focused on killing Christians, clerics, politicians, students, poli policemen, and soldiers, as well as Muslim clerics who condemn the mayhem. Even their own people that condemn what they're doing, they're killing them too. And that's, now I'm going to go with you guys. If you want to know more about it, get on this thing that my brother has a friend. It's about the, uh, Newsweek, and it's called, do uh, you have that in front of you? No, I'll just tell him. It's, it's called The Royal Christians Newsweek, Newsweek Breaks Conspiracy Silence. And it's uh, it's on Gateway News, South African Christian News Portal. And this is from South Africa, okay? So you get it right from the horse's mouth. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, it's okay for us to, to let other countries other countries come into the United States and give their views about their political, their religious beliefs, their political beliefs too. And that's how free this country's been. We've always let people have the rights. And I still feel that yeah, people have the rights. But let us all our rights too. 
put on the Constitution. It's not, this, this is not founded on Muslim or Hinduism. It's, called, it's, it's, it's founded on believing in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And that's the way that this country started. And that's the way that it should be. And our Constitution says we have the right. We have the right to, to worship our God. And now it's all being taken away from us. At what cost? Amen. At what cost do we have to lose our rights? That's right. It's not right to be able to sit back and watch where everybody just tears down our books about Jesus Christ or pulling God out of the Constitution or the books or whatever it is out of the schools. This is not right. We still have that right to express how we feel about our God. There's nothing wrong with that. You like to talk about your God, we want to talk about ours. But don't kill us because we we have a belief that's different from yours. And if we killed you for a bar, we apologize. We're not going to stand in the gap with it for everybody that's hurt everybody out there like that. Anyway, I don't get any more political than that. But, uh, <laughs> I, when I see this man from Iran, he doesn't even live here. And the real people, I mean, you know, they're killing them. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder if, if our own country doesn't eat their own. What I mean by that is, you know, when they, when they confess what they believe and you don't like it because it doesn't sound like your agenda or it's, it's un American or whatever, you know, whatever your thought is, you know, that's not right for you to say, well, they can't have it, you know, uh, uh, you know, they shouldn't do that. They should be thinking like I think. I don't think that's right. I think we should all have our points of view. I may not agree with Islam or Hinduism because I know what the truth is. I'm not being arrogant. I just know that I know that I know. And I don't have to be a lawyer for God or for Jesus Christ. All I got to do is be a witness. If you want to accept that, it's fine. If you don't, then go on your way. So I think that's about it. Do you anything to add, bro? No, I think, you know, um, I just I just never seen a, um, a Christian religion where they would actually kill somebody for, for not being a Christian, you know. And, you know, I don't think God... You know, he gives us a free will. All I want to say is, is that the Lord gives us a free will to choose him or not, you know. And he said, you know, you'll have either life or death, you know. But he says if you have life, you choose him. But uh, but he gives us a free will, basically. He, he doesn't force us to say, hey, you know, you have to follow me. But, uh, you know, so, but we're not going to, yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> I, I don't know what has happened in the past, like let's say the early Christian days and stuff like that. You know, missionaries going over to different countries. And I don't know if killing has went on. Maybe it has. Maybe it has. I don't. I'm not privy to that, or maybe I'm not well versed enough to know about that. But yeah. if I do, if, if that did happen, I ask forgiveness in, the, in front of all my yeah. all, all our viewers out there in the name of Jesus. I ask forgiveness for what we've done wrong. Yeah. And I ask the Lord to forgive us and, yeah. and to take this on, you know, to, to, to be more sensitive to, to other cultures and, and other religions. That doesn't mean I'm going to change. Yeah. I, I know who my Lord and Savior is, and I won't back down. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to take me to the prison, then go so and do it. Yeah. That's just yeah. my thoughts, and that's my beliefs, and I will not back down for no one. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think, brother, I think I think a long time ago it did happen uh, through the Crusades. I think if that's what it was, the Crusades. Yeah. yeah. And, and that, that's why I put a check on us when we were saying that because yeah. I wasn't sure. But it, it seems right that there was a lot of that going on. In fact, there's a view of, of ours that sent it to us. It says, I don't think you understand that this happened way back then. And I was kind of caught in the, in the moment because I wasn't sure about that. But then I started watching different things about the Christians and way back. And they were killing people. Hmm. They hate killing people because they wanted to get their agenda across. Yeah. And I don't I want you to kill people to get your agenda across. Yeah. I yeah. have to show you this is the way, the truth, and the life. This is yeah. the way you have to do it. Yeah. Wow. Well, you Christians out there, pray for pray for this uh, Iran pastor out there. And uh, he's basically... Yeah, just, uh, put the real quick right now. Yeah, exactly. Body. Yeah. This brother? Oh, it's a good idea, brother. You you want to leave us? You want me to do it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. Lord, we just lift up this pastor, Lord, um, who's in Iran right now, Lord. I just I just ask, Lord oh. Jesus, that... You care of yourself. Yes, that you would just uh, um, 
have favor on him, Lord God. And uh, have favor upon all those who want to be converted in Christianity, Lord. That, uh, Lord, uh, we just ask your protection on him. We ask, Lord Jesus, that uh, your angels will watch over him, just like how your angels watched over Daniel in the lion's den, Lord. Yes, Lord. And uh, we just ask, Lord Jesus, uh, that you just uh, calm the fire and the persecution that's happening there, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we also we just lift yourself and his family up to yes, you. Yes, God. Yes, for going through a hard time, seeing their loved one where they're at. And they're fearful of probably their own lives, too, after you see leaves. You know, if he does, if they do just execute him. Father, I ask if there's any way possible that you could stop this execution from happening. Yes, Lord. And I prefer, I mean, Lord, I, I would like to see this man live and have his family with, be with him. But, Lord, I'm asking for your will. If there's any way that your glory could come out by you keeping him here on the earth until you want to call him back home. You know, not by being uh, by murdered by somebody else, but if there's any way possible that you could spare his life, Father, we ask that you do this in the name of Jesus. Yes. If there's any way possible. If not, Lord, we know that he's better off with you, but we just pray for the family that you could do this. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, and Father, I also pray for any videos that we put up that uh, the, the, pe the people in power would not pull off uh, uh, productions that we put on having to do about Muslims in, in, in Israel, in America. Yes, Lord. I, what he needs to know, it's the, it's the right, it's our constitutional right, and Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you let this happen, and that you'd stop those those persons that are, or people that are doing this from happening in Jesus' name, Amen. and principalities and powers. Amen. Amen. So on that note, everybody, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you.